Welcome along guys. Well today is a good day. Today I'm at KTM UK to pick up this absolute beast. Literally this is the Beast 3. A bike I was meant to borrow two months ago before the C word kicked off and a bike I'm so excited about riding. So I've literally they've wheeled it out of the garage. This is going to be a first ride video. I've owned the Super Duke 1, a heavily modified Super Duke 1. I've had the Super Duke 2 on loan for a couple of weeks, a couple of years ago. This is the brand new Super Duke 3. I'm quite excited. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, she's beautiful and my favourite colour. <laughs> Roll the intro chop. Oh, and she purrs like a kitten. It feels more sculpted, the seat. If my ass is fitting into it, it's much more sculpted than the old bike. The view's quite similar. The tank looks higher. The new switch gear looks a million times better. This bike is probably fully loaded, knowing the press bikes normally come with all the track packs and all that enabled. It's a bit more, f yeah, it's a different riding position. Your knees are a little bit higher. The bars seem a little bit lower. This is a bit more Tuono-like, I would say. Yeah, the riding position is very different from the old Super Duke. The old Super Duke was like a massive supermoto on steroids. This is a bit more Tuono-like. I mean, actually, I found the old Super Duke a little bit too upright. So if you were on the motorway or got on a fast stretch of road, you were right up in the wind. This, I'm definitely down a bit more. I'm, I'm over the front of the bike a bit more. That may be much better for the weight transfer because that was another criticism of the old bike. It had a real sort of wallowy transition between, you know, when you're on and off the power between the weight of the bike going to the front and back. This, with this riding position as well, and then the other changes they've made to this bike. That could very well have addressed that. Whoa! That's quick. I mean, for this year, they've not really done too much to the power of the engine. I think it's another couple of brake horsepower. So it's around about the 175 bhp figure. That's probably, I think it's around the 145 newton meters of torque figure. I haven't done my full research yet because this is just the first ride. I'm going to follow this up with a with a final thoughts type video as well. But, uh, oh, slow down, it's a 30 here, chop seat. There's no, uh, there's no getting away from saying you didn't know what the speed was, the size of that. One change they have made for this year is the forks are finally adjustable for preload. Amazing, why that wasn't on there before, I just don't know. They've also added a rear linkage to the rear suspension, to the shock. KTM have always had this PDS system. I think it's called, whereby they say you don't need a linkage, you know, the shock connects directly to the swinging arm. Well, for this, they've gone with a, a linkage system. I think because it gives a bit more travel in the suspension, and you know, that was, again, that's one of the reasons you had that transition of weight when you're on and off the power on the old bike. That whole linkage system has hopefully addressed that. We will see. But first <laughs> It's a beast! It really is a beast! That power just, oh, it's, it's instant. It's absolutely instant. There's no build-up, it's just bang! There's your power. I really hope I don't really like this bike. I really do not want to buy a new bike. I've just sold the GSXR. I've paid off my loans. The last thing I want is another loan. So this bloody bike better not be irresistible see I, i'm on the front brake as well quite a lot on the old bike i was supermoto style i was on the rear brake this i'm on the front brake it's much more sporty it's much more sports bike like oh <laughs> oh geez yeah that is uh yeah that is a lot of grunt that is a phenomenal amount of grunt. On the old bike you had the bike you were sat like that and the bike was here in front of you. This is this is almost feels calf racer-ish. Calf racer-ish? <laughs> you sort of leant forward. Well, 
was some sort of mad, insane calf racer. Over the bumpy stuff, that suspension actually seems very, very nice. Very plush. I thought it might all be a little bit hard, a little bit track focused, but that is lovely, lovely and smooth. These are quite crashy, these, these roads, so you will get a bit of a, a knock, but that is, oh, power. Front brake is delicious. <laughs> Another complaint I had with my old Gen 1 Super Duke is the front brakes felt wooden. They never had that bite. You, you know, it was the same setup as what was on the Tuono, you know, with the M50s, a Brembo master cylinder, maybe not the best Brembo master cylinder on the old bike, but they just felt wooden. You had to really pull them. I don't know if it was the pads, I mean it had steel lines and everything, but ah, this, they're right there, they're right there. This has got the Stylema calipers, hasn't it? So they're not the M50s, but it's, they're so much better. It's what it should have been. <laughs> Anti wheelie keeping that front end in check. Yeah, this is uh, pretty special. Damn it. Damn it. I did not want to like this. I can tell already I'm going to love this. Ah, oh, this has got me written all over it. These big 1290 engines, these LC8 engines, are they LC8? They're always a little bit unusable, but well, they always were a little bit unusable below 3000 revs. Oh, I don't know. That picked up beautifully. They're always a little bit rattling, a little bit. And sh if you had any loose fillings, you had to hold on to them and shut your gob because you may have lost them. 2,000 revs. Whoa! Wow! Turn what you're saying now. <laughs> wow, that just really took off from two and a half grand. That's much more. That bottom end is much smoother. Much smoother at the bottom. Oh, I'm leaving that front brake into the corner. It's beautiful. Very compliant suspension. I mean, these are the little lanes I was riding on, rode the Supermoto up on. These are bumpy little lanes, but even this suspension on this is soaking them up. I mean, I've got it in road mode at the moment. I've not even got it in sport mode. Not alone track. I think it's got four different modes. No, I'm in street mode. Oh, okay. I'm in street mode with road ABS. That's what I'm in. Okay, let's see if we can go into the menu here a little bit. Oh, data trip ride mode. Oh, okay, I'm in street. I'm going to go sport. That was bloody street. Close the throttle. Oh, right, we're in sport now. How do we go back? Back there. Yeah, I think it take a little while to get used to the, the menu systems. It may not be the most intuitive system. We'll see. It's early days. I haven't even touched the rear brake yet. Where is it? There it is. On the old bike, I was on the rear brake all the time. This is, this would be incredible on track. I can tell already, this is much tauter. The chassis on this is three times more rigid. I don't know where I'm going, I've got to be a bit careful here. <laughs> the chassis is three times more rigid than the old bike. It looks very similar to the RC8 chassis the old sports bike it's not we're assured it's completely new it looks similar three times as rigid i'm not getting any of that feel that the front is not got any it used to, it used to be like you wouldn't get much feedback from the front on my old one not so on this i could tell what everything is doing beneath me oh this is good you know oh yeah i'm uh oh Oh yeah. The Gen 1 had its flaws. I sold my bike because it was brilliant fun when it was on the gas, but the manners of the bike around town, it is like below, as I say, below 3,000 revs. You better make sure your fillings are secure. It was just annoying. The clutch feel wasn't nice. It was, it was the niggles which just drove me to sell it in the end. The Gen 2, they fixed all those problems. A lot of people said I should have bought the Gen 2. They're probably right. The Gen 2 fixed all the rider niggles, but it was never that sharp in the twisties because you had that slight front end wishy-washiness. This is on a whole nother level as far as sporty feel goes. Absolutely whole nother level. 
You either like a V-twin or you don't like a V-twin. You know, that they, they can be vibey, you know, they can be a lot of torque, but they don't have that much at the top. You know, you, you either love them or you, or you hate them, really. This, vibe-wise, it's so smooth. You wouldn't even really think you were on a V-twin. I'm sure it's smoother than the, the Gen 2 version. Way smoother than my old Gen 1. It's nice. But through the gears, it is, ooh, you've got, you got so much engine braking. That is the, the thing with a V-twin. Especially a massive 1300cc one. Jesus, you pick up speed quick. Turn right. Oh, I don't fancy it. Jesus, you pick up speed quick on this. You have got to be careful. I've got nowhere to mount me out of my add-ons case. That's why I've got me. I'm having to go Cali Moto just from the audio. Oh, well, this isn't looking good, is it? This is a dead end. This is someone's house. Sorry, we're going to have to turn around. Apologies. Apologies. Oh, it's nice. Those brakes are nice. You know, I've got it in sport mode now, and I think that's made it a little bit more on and off on the throttle. Because I've clicked it into sport, so it's made it a bit of a handful, perhaps. But, you've got to be sporty, in you? Yeah, it's got a handle because it can get you in all sorts of trouble. The speed of where it approaches ah, the next bend. Oh, man, it's good. It is an animal. I'm not even giving it full, full welly. That's just part throttle. It's just so much grunt. It's incredible. Damn, damn. I didn't want to buy a Super Duke. I didn't want to buy one. Oh, look at this. Damn KTM and their fine motorcycles. The beauty of the electronics on this is you can turn off the anti-wheelie but leave the traction control on. You could do that with the Gen 2 and it's still like it on this one. With the Gen 2, you could only do it in the track mode. So you had to go into the track mode and then you'd have the track layout. So you wouldn't be able to see like your time and all that sort of information. So I wonder if they've changed it on this. Or I'll have a play round because I'd like to be able to just turn off the anti-wheelie. Well, I don't know if I would like to or not. It's, it's quite aggressive. Could it be? Could it be too much to run with no anti-wheelie on? I don't know. I'm not going to turn it off just yet until I've. I mean, even over that, it's cresting. The front wheel is cresting just with a. It's just there. I don't think I've ever ridden a bike which has so much instant go. I think without electronics and wheelie control, I think I think it'd almost be unrideable for most people. I think there'd only be a very few people who could control this bike without killing themselves with no without electronics. This is one thing electronics has brought in. People who moan about they don't like them, they want a pure experience. Ride this and tell me you would be happy to ride it on the gas, on the road, with no electronics. I dare you. Now this is what annoyed me about the old bike. When you went through town, the low speed manners, you know, the throttle was snatchy. You know, you'd go on and off the throttle just very gently like that. And this is sport mode, bear in mind. And it would be, it would annoy me. It would be annoying. It'd get lots of vibes. It would, it would, it would go like this. Uh, uh, uh. It was no smoothness. You got a few little vibes. You got a few little t tingles going on. You got to. It's a, it's a big V twin. There's no getting away from that. It's not as smooth as a straight four. They're never going to be. But that is perfectly acceptable. Absolutely perfectly acceptable. Oh, it just lays in beautifully. It feels sharp. Absolutely sharp. It feels like I'm riding a razor sharp weapon. It's got no ba it's got no cuddly bits, this. This feels razor sharp. National ah! Ah! I ain't got a clue how to work any of this. Cruise control. 
on the motorway, stick it in sixth. Well, this isn't a motorway, but let's, let's pretend it is. 70 miles an hour, three and a half thousand revs. Feels like the engine's chugging a little bit in top gear at 70. Three and a half thousand revs. That's 70. Well, first impressions, she is an absolute beauty. Oh, I like the seat. I can feel the rear seat just touching the, because I've got a big ass. I can feel the rear seat just touching my lower back. So there wouldn't be much room to move back and forth, back and forward. You are locked in a little bit, but it's quite a comfortable position to be locked into. And even at 70, I'm not getting much, because of your leg forward a little bit, I'm not getting too much wind resistance on my helmet and it's not dragging my head back, even though I've got a peak. That is perfectly acceptable to sit at 70 on this. It is a bit of a hoony, it's a bit of a hoonigan. It's effortless, it's absolutely effortless to go fast. Oh, it's just so easy. It's, it's, it, you don't even have to knock it down or anything. It, you just you just open it up and you just go. It is too easy to go fast. Oh, a nice little twist is here. Oh, that front brake is lovely. The, cr oh, the grunt out of that bend. Oh my goodness. So even if you end up and spit too much of high gear, it really doesn't matter. I honestly think the tyres on this will last 500 miles. <laughs> the amount of torque it's got is just crazy. Oh, wheel up. Floating front wheel. I don't know where I'm going, so you've got to ride a little bit careful. <laughs> oh, it's mad. It's insane. It is absolutely insane. Jesus, it brings out you in a hooligan. You just have to think, calm down. This bike is on another level. This is on another level of hoonage. I can't think of another bike. Well, the Tuono always makes me ride like a bit of a hooligan. The Super Duke was always a little bit more sensible. But I don't think this one is. Ah! First impressions. I'm impressed. I'm, I'm, I didn't expect it. I knew it would be good. Everyone was saying how good it was. I knew it would be good. What I wasn't expecting was it for it to be quite as sharp, quite as mental as this this is properly a properly focused hooligan now it's not it's the old bike was a bit like a you know a bit like a big custom car you know it's all about power but the handling it was let down a little bit but it had an amazing power plant in it what they've done with this one it seems is they've brought the chassis up to match that power plant and they've tweaked the power plant as well and the end result is something just insane. Something which would be completely unrideable if you didn't have the electronics, the, the fantastic anti-wheelie, the traction control. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether it's just too mad for me, whether I could control myself on such a, a beast. <sighs> Blimey, I'm certainly looking forward to finding out. <laughs> I have actually got the ZH2 at home waiting for me. So I've got this and the ZH2 for about a week together, both of those bikes. So I'm going to be doing some direct comparisons between this and the ZH2. I've not even ridden the ZH2 yet. Wheels Motorcycles dropped it off to me today. I've not even ridden it. So I'm going to be very interested to see how that bike compares to this bike. We do a back-to-back -back test. I'll do separate reviews of each bike. I'll do a first ride video on the ZH2 as well. But uh, this one, this one, this one's gonna take some beating. So take care guys. I will see you later.
Oh, oh. Yeah.